everyone welcome back to another video this is going to be a two-part video the first part is in real time and it is going to be a follow along with me on how i draw the face in a three-quarter view and tilted up pose so that part of the video follows the techniques and the methods that I mentioned in my how to draw faces tutorial videos. So if you haven't watched those yet, I highly recommend that you watch them first before watching this one. They will be linked in the card section. So go ahead and watch those and then just come back to this. The second part of this drawing is only going to be a time lapse. I'm not going to explain my process in a lot of detail as I would with the first part. So it'll just be basically me continuing and finishing the drawing. So for the drawing, I am using a reference image for the pose. And I got this image from Instagram from the beautiful Mika Montez or Mika Montez. I hope I didn't say that super incorrectly, but her photos, her aesthetic, Oh my gosh, her style. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I will leave her links in the description box below so you guys can check her out as well. And like always, when it comes to drawing the face, I start off with two basic shapes. We have the circle and the upside down triangle. And because this is going to be in a three quarter view, we wanna make sure that the upside down triangle is asymmetrical. One side is smaller than the other. And the side that is smaller is the direction that the face is turned to. So for example, my reference image has her facing to the right. Therefore, the smaller side of the upside down triangle is also on the right. I then add the guidelines such as the vertical center line. So in my tutorial video, I explain why this one isn't actually located on the center of what we just drew. That is because this center line is located on the actual center of the face. Therefore, if this person is looking towards the right or looking towards the left, that center line shifts as well. So so for the reference image, she is facing to the right, therefore the vertical center line um, has shifted towards the right as well. Then I add the horizontal center line, which is also pretty much the same. So normally in a full on front view, the horizontal center line is located on the halfway point between the top of the circle and the bottom of the inverted triangle. However, because with this particular pose, not only is it in a three quarter view, the head is also tilted up. So just like the vertical center line, it also shifts, but instead of shifting right or left, it's shifting up or down based on where the head is tilted. So it's tilted up, therefore it's gonna sit just slightly higher than the actual halfway point of the circle and the upside down triangle. I then add the six other horizontal guidelines and this is kind of where it gets a bit tricky and it's not actually that difficult to understand however explaining it is a different feat and I will try my best to actually explain this and I do recommend that you watch the very first tutorial that I created for this in hopes that you understand this concept and this technique much better. So like I mentioned in that tutorial, I have three simple rules. One of them is perspective. Perspective comes into play with a three quarter view. And in my tutorial, I demonstrated how perspective plays in one direction. So moving the face left to right. In this particular pose, we're using perspective in two different directions. So we're moving the face left or right as well as up and down. And as perspective suggests, the further away an object is from the viewer, the smaller it is. Therefore, when we have an object that is tilted either right or left, up or down, relative to the viewer, one side always moves further away from the viewer and the other side simultaneously moves closer to the viewer. 
So this is pretty much the same as what I've talked about in my tutorial. Instead of just applying it to left or right, you also apply it to up and down. So tilting your head up means you're moving the top of your head further away from the viewer, making it appear smaller. And that is why we shifted the horizontal center line up. That way, the top half of the face appears smaller than the bottom half of the face. And that's when we add the three guidelines on the top of the face. And they are equally spaced apart, but you will see that the distance between the horizontal guidelines on the top of the face are shorter than the distance between the horizontal guidelines on the bottom half of the face. And that basically explains how I add guidelines on top of the basic shapes. As always, each horizontal guideline represents a facial feature, so that's also on the screen. And I use those to start drawing parts of the face, such as the nose, which goes on the nose line. And since I am using a reference, I try to draw the nose as close as possible to the reference image. Maybe in a future video, I will um, talk about how I draw a nose in more detail. However, I am still using the basics that I showed you in my tutorial video. For example, I'm drawing a small circle for the tip of the nose, and then I'm using curves for the nostrils. However, for this particular nose, I've drawn them a, lot, a little bit wider and they're not as curved and I also drew a line for the bridge but it's not as pronounced so I leave a gap around the eye area as you can see. Next is I draw the lips which is a very common pose for lips. So I start off with a trapezium shape for the mouth opening and then I draw the upper and lower lips using the asymmetrical leaf shape as a guide which I mentioned in my tutorial video once again. And because the face is turned to the right this um, shape for the lips are actually asymmetrical where the right side is smaller than the left side. After that, I move on to the eyes, making sure that the right eye is slightly smaller than the left eye because her face is turned to the right. And then I draw the curves for the eyelids much higher um, than where I normally would draw them for a subtle deep set eye, but also because in the reference image, she's actually lifting or raising her eyebrows, which um, shifts the line for the eyelid higher up as well. And with that said, I then draw the eyebrows and then I draw them a little higher up than the guideline because in the reference photo, she's subtly raising her eyebrows to give off that model sultry look. After that, I then draw the ovals for the cheeks. I add the outline for the face and then I draw the ear on the left side. I don't draw the right ear because with this view, it's not visible. And then I also draw the hairline. And that pretty much finishes how I draw this particular pose for the face. And from here on, it's not going to be a step-by-step in-depth explanation as to how I draw or what I do with this particular drawing since we're going to enter the speed paint part of the video. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare and I do want to thank Skillshare for making yet another video possible for this channel. If you're looking to learn a new skill or master one that you already have, Skillshare is definitely the place where you can gain knowledge and skills on a wide range of topics. And that could be on anything related to art, photography, design, business, animation, lifestyle, productivity, so much more. So if you are interested, for example, in learning more techniques on how to draw faces and how to apply perspective in your drawings, I will link in the description box below classes that talk about those topics so that hopefully they can help you 
with your art journey. And because this video is sponsored by Skillshare, I do have a special link in the description box where the first 1,000 people to sign up using that link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. That actually gives you unlimited access to all of their online classes. And normally that's valued at less than 10 US dollars a month if you pay annually, which is still a really good deal. But like I said, if you sign up using that link in the description box, you will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. And I do highly recommend that you check that out because it only goes to the first 1,000 people to sign up using the link. I do recommend that you guys take advantage of this offer. Check out the links in the description box for those classes and hopefully they can help you learn the basics and advanced techniques on how to draw faces. So like I said, the second part of this video is mostly going to focus on this speed paint and me continuing the sketch that I have drawn in the first part of this video and coloring that in with watercolors and then adding the line art and finishing touches to it. So I won't go through all of the techniques that I've used in this drawing in this video because I have tutorial videos on that and I'm hoping that in the future I can have a video kind of like this where I will create a new drawing and the focus will be on a different part of the drawing process. For example, this one focuses on how to draw a specific pose. In the next video, maybe I can focus on how to draw a specific hairstyle or how to draw um, skin with different lighting effects, something like that. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve with this kind of format video. And this is definitely the first one out of many. So I am open to feedback and suggestions on how I can best improve this kind of content for you guys. But the main reason as to why I created this kind of format is because I get a lot of comments from people on my tutorials asking for more advanced techniques. And the reason why I don't really want to create a separate tutorial with just advanced techniques is because I don't really have a lot of advanced <laughs> techniques other than the ones that I've already mentioned. So my advanced techniques are basically me using the basic techniques and methods from the tutorial videos that I've created and just applying that differently. So as you can see before when I was talking about the three-quarter view and how perspective plays on um, one direction left and right which I showed in the video. In this video, I basically just used that exact concept or idea onto perspective in the direction of up and down. So it's basically just that. And I didn't really want to sound super repetitive, but if you guys don't like this kind of format, let me know as well. I wanted to give this a try and I'm very much open to feedback and suggestions. And just before I end this video, I do kind of want to give a tip for the sketching part because since that is the main focus of this video, I want to give a tip because when I'm sketching normally and when it's not for a tutorial video, I tend to leave the pencil sketch very roughly and very lightly at the very beginning. So you might have seen me or you might see me pause a lot in the video. Like there's those mini pauses where my pencil's kind of just hovering over the drawing and I'm not doing anything. And the reason for that is because that actually allows me to look at the drawing and see if I like it or not. And usually I would suggest doing this at the very end of I don't know, some section of your process. For example, once you finish a sketch, you pause, you look at it, and then you assess. However, I've noticed recently, especially when I'm viewing my own real-time videos, is that I actually pause a lot throughout um, the sketching process. And not just the sketching process, but throughout my entire process. So whether I'm sketching, whether I'm refining the sketch, whether I'm adding colors to it, I'm always pausing all the time. And I realized that that's actually a really good habit to get into because that allows me to look at the artwork and assess as I'm going. Therefore, 
I can pick out mistakes before they even happen. I can also pick out mistakes that are still you know, new and fresh and I can salvage them, especially when you're working with watercolors because they're not dry yet. So I can immediately see it and I can actively take action to fix it. So this is also very helpful when working with a reference image. I like to see and to check if I've gotten the likeness correct or if some parts don't look right. And then I can make adjustments as I go. Sometimes when I'm using a reference, I also tend to focus on one thing at a time when it comes to sketching. For example, if I'm drawing the nose and I'm trying to get that right, then I'm only really focusing on the nose. However, it's not just the nose or it's not just one part of a face that captures the likeness. It's all of those unique facial features that are working together to create that person's face. So once I've drawn all of the facial features all together very roughly, I tend to kind of sit back and then look at it for a little while and see if everything that I've drawn is working together in the way that I am happy with. And of course, if I am, then I move on to the next stage, which is usually refining that sketch, making the lines darker, or adding um, colors to it or adding shading to it, basically the next step in my process. However, if I'm not happy with it, then I make adjustments accordingly. So I think that that's something to kind of get used to and to develop that skill of looking at your artwork and criticizing it in a way that, you know, is healthy and allows you to improve your drawings Um as you go as well. So not just at the very end of the process, but also during the process. And that is it for my video. I'm going to end it there. I hope that you guys like this video. And like I said, if you have any thoughts regarding this format of the video, or if you want to see um, more advanced techniques in an actual tutorial video, not something like this, then let me know in the comments down below so I know what kind of content you guys are searching for. Um, if you did like this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you also let me know that you liked it, share this video, subscribe, don't forget to push the notification button. And you can also check out all of the links in the description box down below. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helped and I hope to see you in my next one.